Hello, my name is Ed Hughes, and welcome to my presentation on Exploring Exponents. It's a presentation in two parts. This is part one. The second part uses the number line to provide further insights into exponents. This presentation was inspired by my grandson Silas, who encountered some difficulties in doing his exponent assignments. If you have problems with exponents, don't feel bad, you're not alone. And it might be a good thing if your mind is rejecting the inadequate explanation that most people are given about exponents. What do I mean? Well, if you were told that an exponent tells you how many times a number is multiplied by itself, that definition is as near wrong as can be without actually being wrong, and it certainly has some rough edges. So here we go. Exploring exponents, part one of two. I spoke about some rough edges. Let's take a look at it. You remember the definition that you were most likely given is an exponent tells you how many times a number is multiplied by itself. Okay, let's work with the 10 to the zero. Well, there's an exponent. And how can something be multiplied by itself zero times? How about 10 to the first? Where's the multiplication? How can you multiply something by itself one time? What does that mean? How about a fractional exponent? 10 raised to the one half. How do you multiply something by itself half a time? How about a negative exponent? 10 to the minus two. That definition you were given doesn't work. It simply does not work well, let me give you my definition. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's going to work and it's going to make things simple. Here's an equation. B, which means the base, X is the exponent, and Y is the result. Now, let's get one thing clear. When you're working with exponents, you can only combine exponents that have the same base, or you can only combine them simply. There are uh, you can change the base to make it equal, but that's a whole different matter. Given any number y and a base b, there exists an exponent x such that b raised to the x power is equal to y. Where? b raised to the r power times b raised to the s power is equal to b r plus s, meaning that numbers with exponents, when they're multiplied, you add the exponents. Again, assuming they have the same base. b to the r divided by b to the s is equal to b to the r minus s. The exponent of the denominator is subtracted from the exponent of the numerator. And I've added here that the denominator can't be zero. b to the s is unequal to zero. Uh, the only way it could be equal to zero is if uh, the base were zero, and that's kind of nonsense because uh, nobody goes around raising zero to powers because it, it's meaningless. Uh, and the third part of the definition is that b to the first is equal to b. Given this definition, we can do all kinds of things. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at some of these uh, uh, rough edges, see if our definition uh, gets rid of them. Uh, let's write uh, b to the x divided by b to the x. We know from math when something is divided by itself, the answer is 1. We also know from our definition that when we do div division of a number with a, an exponent, we can uh, just subtract the uh, exponent, subtracting the exponent from the denominator from the numerator, we get bx minus x, which is going to equal b0. These are all equal, so b0 is equal to 1. We remember from our definition that b is equal to b to the first, and the question is, what number could we multiply 
um, and get uh, an exponent of 1, and that would be b to the 1 half times b to the 1 half, because when we add the exponents, we get 1. Now, we know that the uh, definition of square root, square root of, of b is a number that's multiplied by itself and results in b. Well, here we show b to the half multiplied by b to the half gives us b. So this number with the fraction exponent, b to the one half, is just simply the square root of b. We can do the same thing for the cube root. We can say b is equal b to the first is equal to b to the one third times b to the one third times b to the one third because our rule said for multiplication we add the exponents a third plus a third plus a third gives us one b raised to the one third is the cube root of b so fractional exponent we basically say it's the uh, the root when the numerator is 1. If, it, uh, if the numerator isn't 1, then it's basically what power the 1 third here. For example, if we take 1 third times 1 third, we're going to get b to the 2 thirds, which says then that we're taking the cube root of b and squaring it, multiplied it times itself. So you can see with our definition, uh, all those difficult things that terrorize people, the exponent of 0, the exponent of 1, uh, fractional exponents, negative exponents, become non problem How about we take b to the 0 and divide it by b squared. Our rule and our definition was in division, we subtract the exponent of the denominator from the numerator. So, this is going to be 0 minus 2, b to the minus 2, okay? Now, we also know that b to the 0 is 1. We showed that in the previous page, so we can rewrite this as 1 b over b squared is equal to b to the minus 2. All right, so what does this tell? b to the minus 2 is 1 divided by b squared. Now, let's get a little far, far, further insight into this. All of our integers can actually be written as fractions. For example, 10 can be written as 10 divided by 1. We just don't bother to write this, but in fact, just remember that every integer is actually can be written as a fraction uh, divided by 1. Now, if a number is multiplied by another number to get 1, that other number is called a reciprocal. For example, 100 times 1 over 100 is equal to 1. 100 is the reciprocal of 100. If we remember that this 100 really can be written like this, then we can say the reciprocal is merely the number inverted. Okay, Take this number, invert it, the 1 goes on top, the 100 goes on the bottom. So we do the same thing here, okay? b squared times b to the minus 2 is equal to b0, which is equal to 1. So that says that this number is the reciprocal of this. And as we saw, sure enough, it was this number with a 1 over it, just like we saw down here. So we can see that a number, a base with a negative exponent, is the reciprocal of the number with a positive exponent. Why? Because if we take the negative and add it to the positive, 
we're going to get zero. Exponent of zero, which gives us one. So this b to the minus two is nothing more than the reciprocal of b squared. So now we've taken care of, with our de new definition, we've taken care of the negative exponent, we've taken care of the one, the fractional. We can do one other thing with the fractional ones. We said there that uh, b to the first is equal to b to the one. Now let's change, let's change this example. Let's say b to the three halves is equal to, well, b to the one half times b to the one half times b to the one half. Okay. And because if we add these exponents, a half plus a half plus a half, we get three halves. And we can rewrite this as, take this, this one together here, and that'd be b to the first times b to the one half. So this b to the three half means, remember b to the first is b, b times the square root of b. In the case where the base is 10, this would be 10 at the square root of 10 of, of 10 is, uh, well, 3 times 3 is 9, so it would be a little bit more than 3. Let's say it's 3.2. So we have 10 times 3.2, or 32. So b to the 3 halves is 32. Okay. Now, this, when we add the exponents, you know, multiplication is really a shorthand for addition. Instead of adding this, a half, a half, we can just multiply. Okay? So, multiplication is a shortcut for addition. Instead of writing a half plus a half plus a half, we can just say three times a half. So, let's uh, take this thing here. Uh, we know we got b, b to the half, b to the half, b to the half, and rewrite it this way. Cubed. Cubed means times uh, a number times itself three times. So we can see here that b to the three halves means b to the one half cubed or raised to the third power. We would get the same result as here. Uh, b to the one half being the, uh, if b were 10, b to the square root, b to the one half we saw was a square root, the square root of 10 would be 3.2, and it says multiply it times itself three times cubed. So uh, 3.2 times 3.2 is 10, times 3.2 we get the 32 that we saw up here. What we learned then is that we had a rule for multiplying numbers with exponents. We had a rule for dividing numbers with exponents. And now we can see that raising an exponent to a power means multiplying it. Okay? And it's perfectly logical. Multiplying this times 3 is no different than adding it up 3 times. If you want to uh, talk about uh, roots, uh, let's say the cube root of b to the third, we can do that several ways. One, we could write b raised to the third, and we saw earlier that the, uh, of the one half power is a square root, the one third power is a cube root, so we could do this. And then following the rule we just developed here is multiply uh, this times this. So we would get uh, b to the 3 times 1 third, which is going to be equal b to the first. And sure enough, if you multiply b to the first times b to the first times b to the first, you add the exponents, you'd get b cubed. So this is the 
cube root of b. Um, multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing, so that's uh, as far as we need to go. Uh, remember that, that the, uh, the division can be done by multiplying by a fraction.